Hey guys, welcome back to the Project Bebo podcast. My name is Ray Menangi, and today we're starting the NBA review series on our channel. Yes, before I want to start off the review series, uh, we have rebranded our channel a little bit, and we have uh, successfully uh, launched our trivia tournaments. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more of that in our in an upcoming video that talks about the new phase of the Project Bebo channel. Uh, this channel has been evolving, and we would like we would like to share what our future plans are for it later. Uh, the review series is a uh, series that uh, we're gonna do for uh, the rest of the NBA season as our main videos that are gonna be dropped every week, three to four of these videos every week. So we're gonna uh, one of the hosts is gonna review one of the a couple of the, the days of the NBA and talk about the games and all that type of stuff, right? So the first game on my list was Jazz Pelicans. The score is one hundred six to one hundred four. The Pelicans had an early lead and they did not keep it all the way through the end of the game, where Don Mitchell and Rudy Gobert cleaned the game up. This was a bad loss for the Pelicans. This is, this is they sh- should be winning games like this where they were in, up ahead because they need uh, uh, as many wins as possible to get into that play-in tournament to get into the playoffs, and that's their end goal here. Try to get the playoffs, and from there they can see what they can do. But a game like this where they could have won, it, sh- it, it sucks for them. They have m- many more games in the future to play. I hopefully they can uh, do better on those. Next, uh, the Clippers and Lakers game. I'm a Lakers fan. This is uh, this was a all right game. It was very sloppy on both teams. The Clippers and Lakers they played extremely sloppy. A lot of turnovers. A lot of weird things happening here and there. Like offense being way too slow at times. And like the defense was great. Like uh, during the commentary, uh, Reggie Miller kept saying, "Yeah, everyone's defense is gonna be great. The offense is gonna uh, be lacking." Like LeBron's offense was not great in the first three quarters he uh came up clutch in the end uh Kawhi, paul george played extremely well the clippers did not have lou williams or mentress harrell i will say that it's a bigger impact than what rondo or avery bradley would have i during the regular season i did not like avery bradley or rondo's play especially rondo avery bradley was hit or miss sometimes so i like this new team i like how Dion waiters kuzma actually played well last night i like those type of players those guys are more instant offense and like with rondo and avery bradley they might be better defenders but most times these guys are not scoring a lot of points so like it, it's hit or miss but this was not a statement game by the lakers don't call it I, I i know a lot of laker nation is calling a statement game this shows that we're going to win the championship this doesn't show anything both teams are not trying at their full potential and the clippers were at a weaker point because uh, they had less of their roster while the clippers were playing this dude who has the last name coffee i amir coffee i never heard of him before but like he's a rookie apparently he played okay last night i don't even know why i'm mentioning his name it's just like like that's like the type of players the Clip, clippers have to play when they're uh, Roster is still getting um, healthy and coming back from quarantine. Patrick Beverly didn't play the whole game. This, this was not a statement game. This was way too sloppy. I'm happy the Lakers won, but we need to play better in our next couple of games to uh, have better rhythm for the rest of the playoffs. This is the thing. These first two days are more about the rhythm of each and every team so they can get their rhythm and the playoffs it can be amazing. Next, we got the Friday, the 31st. The first game is the um, Magic Nets, 128 Magic to 118 Nets. Uh, the problem, I don't have much to say. I'll just say this. Like, the Nets are playing for nothing right now. So many of their star players are gone. They're in the playoffs somehow from, like, the regular season. The Magic are trying to improve their seeding a little bit so they don't have to be matched up with Milwaukee in the first round. I, I, I understand there, but I'm not sure if they're going to do any... Uh, they're not going to make that much noise in the playoffs even then, so... It doesn't matter what seed, seed they are, but yeah, they are trying to win as many games as they can. So that's good for them. This is an easy game for them against the Nets. The Nets were injured. Um, next we got the Grizzlies Blazers. This was interesting game. I watched some of the highlights of this game. It was 135 Grizzlies to 140 Trailblazers. Carmelo and Anthony came out clutch at the end. CJ and Dame Dame Lillard played extremely well towards the game. And throughout the whole game, CJ played well in the first half. Dane played extremely well in the second half. This was a uh, great showcase from the Blazers there. They need to win as many of these games as possible so they can get in the play-in tournament for the eighth seed. So, uh, And the Grizzlies, on the other hand, uh, are the eighth seed, and they had to win all these games. So this is, out of the regular regular season games, these are like the important games. Like between these like lower seeds uh, in the Western Conference, these are the important ones because this can actually determine if you're going to make the playoffs or not. So... This was an extremely important game for um, the Trailblazers, and they actually clutched it up. This was good for them. And I, I saw sometimes they were playing Nurkic and Whiteside on the same on the court at the same time. That was interesting. 
Okay, uh, we have four more games to get to. The Suns, Wizards, Suns 125, Wizards 112. Not much to say, like, Wizards don't have anything to play for. They don't have Bradley Beal. They're, they're pretty much wasting their time here at Orlando. Suns are trying to get as close as possible to the play-in tournament. I don't see it because of, like, like matchups and all that stuff. Next, we got Celtics Bucks. Celtics 112, Bucks 119. Celtics played uh, kind of poorly. Like, Jason Tatum especially played extremely bad. Uh, uh, on the other hand, Giannis looks like he never left. Uh, he was playing played amazing with his 36 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists, dominating the Celtics' in, uh, lack of interior presence. That, that's the weakness of the Celtics. I this, Their team just lacks like interior uh, strength to like stop a player like Giannis. So this this was a um, this was not a statement win by the Bucks. It was just um, just out coaching, getting players into rhythm. Uh, I think this the series. If this is a series, this will be extremely close because the Celtics have the offensive power to keep up with the Bucks. But I'm not sure if their defense can hold up the hold up Giannis. But we we can see. Next, we got the King Spurs. This is a okay game, I guess. Uh, uh, Darren Fox went off. That's great to see. It was 120 Kings to 129 Spurs. These two teams, I'm not sure what they're... Uh, like, they're trying to make the playoffs, obviously, right? But, like, these, these lower-seeded Western Conference teams, I don't see, like, how how realistically they can get into those situations where they can play in the playing tournament. But good, good shout to the Spurs trying to win as many games as possible so they can make the playoffs. Um, great DeMar DeRozan with 10 assists. He's becoming more of a point guard recently. Next is this game, the overtime Rockets Mavericks game. I have watched I watched the overtime of this game because I was I was trying to uh, record uh, this video. Like I had to wait for all the games to be over, right? And then like this went to overtime, so I was like, I right, let me just watch it. This was an interesting game. Zero defense being played, but in the end, the Rockets clutched it up because of PJ Tucker and his defense. Harden was not that bad either on the defensive end too. Uh, the Mavericks just needed a little better coaching towards them. They looked like they didn't know what they were doing exactly. There was not plays it was just more like iso like that's what the league has come to most of this time the plays are in like first three quarters towards the end of the fourth quarter there's a lot of iso pick and rolls like see what you can create from there but that's like the most effective way with this nba how it's going right now like that's the most effective way to score and i, I can understand why harden played incredible Porzingis is playing probably incredible this is just an offensive showdown the rockets just show their experience in clutch time situations while i the weakness of the mavericks is their uh, inability to close games in clutch especially in Luka, who's not that great of a clutch player this season but overall these is uh today these two days were incredible starts for the nba i love uh, most of these games some of these games were impactful some of these games are trying to put teams into rhythm that's what we're going to see in these first couple of days like trying to get uh players into rhythm to make sure they're a full form in the playoffs so thank you guys for listening our our last two videos are going to show up please subscribe like the video turn on the notification bell and signing out is really amazing. Bye.